Does the member wish to withdraw his question? Okay, the member has that right, and that brings to a close questions for oral answer today. Honourable members, I have received I have received letters from Catherine Delahunty and from the Honourable Leanne Dalzell, seeking to debate understanding order 386, the government's proposed changes to education in Christchurch, Selwyn, and Waimakariri. This is a particular case of recent occurrence. The government's announcement was in fact not publicly released until after the House sat last Thursday, although there were earlier media reports. It involves ministerial responsibility. While the announcement is a proposal for the future direction and a detailed program of engagement is being developed, the proposal is an important one and foreshadows developments of very considerable public interest. Given the significance of the matter, I consider it important enough to warrant the immediate attention of the House by way of an urgent debate. The two applications are not identical, but they relate to the same matter. As Catherine de la Hunty lodged her application first, I call upon her to move that the House take note of a matter of urgent public importance. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I move that the House take note of a matter of urgent public importance. Mr. Speaker, the Christchurch Educational Renewal Plan is a plan for cluster learning, or is it a cluster bomb? This education plan has a context which has to be acknowledged as a terrible natural disaster now made more complex by a very difficult response by the government. And there is deep mistrust between Christchurch communities, a deep mistrust between the Christchurch communities around democracy and around issues of education. So we are looking at a stressed community, Mr Speaker, who are asking for a logical and fair response to a natural disaster, instead of which there are going to be 13 school closures and 18 mergers, and people are very concerned about their ability order, to influence Order, this. would members carry on private conversations like to take them outside the House? I'm trying to listen to the Honourable Member Catherine Delahunty. And what is the underlying agenda behind this? That is why, Mr Speaker, we already have an online petition by people concerned about children. We have had public meetings already referred to in this House today, and we have a rally tomorrow and Saturday in Christchurch by community who are very, very concerned about both democracy and education and the ability of Christchurch people who have had it up to their necks with stress, with change, with instability and with shock. The Christchurch Press has made some interesting comments today, quoting other people from that city, quoting principals and parents and teachers about what is actually going on for them right at this moment. And as one principal said to their children, you have been through enough. And we are not denying, Mr Speaker, the need for change. It would be foolish to pretend that anything can go back to the way it was. We are not denying the importance of reassessing education because it is an opportunity to do so. But unfortunately, what has come out of the renewal plan in the context of mistrust which we exist in is not being successful to date. It is very unfortunate what happened last week. It is very unfortunate that the way in which the plan was launched created, if you like, an earthquake of its own. And it's not being made up by people in this House. It has been communicated with us strongly, all of us who are open to hearing it, that there are real problems. This is an issue of education as well as location. And that's why I'm standing here in support of the members of this parliament from Christchurch who have, who have told me from my party that they are flooded with emails from local people, as I am myself as an education spokesperson. And all of this is occurring in a city, Mr Speaker, which has been shattered and is seeking hope and regeneration, in a city where facilities such as schools have been the key support for the, the, the devastation of those communities, where local really matters more than anywhere else. And I myself, having spent time in Aranui during the earliest days in, the fe in February, saw the role of those schools, walked those streets, and I know nothing compared to those communities who are saying, we want change, but we want it on our own terms. And I think that's a fair call. Many of these schools have been the single stable factor in the children's lives. So they may have lost jobs for their parents, may have lost their home, may have been moving around their suburb, may have been through all kinds of changes 
And for, for children who are young, lost the certainty that the earth actually supports us. And now the school, which has been their key place of reference and source of resources, may be going to close. Maybe some of them need to. And if you take the example of Le Bon's on Banks Peninsula, where the predicted roll growth is something like six, there is a logic to it and they support it. But if you take Aranui, Wanone area and some of the intermediates, there are real problems with this renewal plan. Many of the um, schools are asking us to raise issues about the real agenda. And so that for many people, the idea of supersizing is not logical. It smacks more of uh, what Naomi Klein calls shock doctrine, post-disaster um, reorganising, than of an, a plan based on the educational needs of our, some of our younger citizens. And a core issue for people is trust. How can they support and trust the government that has already attacked ECAN and cancelled the local body elections and now is saying it's going to close 13 schools and merge 18 when the criteria have not been made clear. The, what happened last Thursday did nothing to reassure anybody that they were going to be heard. And Shirley Boys, um, uh, um, the possible option of merging Shirley Boys with Christchurch Boys, although some say it will never happen, it was never meant to happen, is a good example of how if you put up an option that is clearly a worst case scenario from those schools' point of view, you will get that Order. kind of reaction. So the, re the, the, the renewal plan, Mr. Speaker, is um, sorry, Mr. Speaker, the, re the, the renewal plan is actually putting up options that have perhaps made the situation even more fraught, which is really un unfortunate. And so we've had a lot of principals speaking out and being very concerned. And because of the level of stress, people will take the worst case scenario from their point of view. They will not just jump on the, the fact that it may just be an option. And, and I think that's why there's been so much concern. The other issue is educational reform. And what the government is asking us to do is trust them on education. Well, I'm sorry, but we've been in this House for a number of years seeing national standards imposed on schools, whether they liked it or not. We've seen the whole issue of class size turning into a ludicrous debacle. And then we have the bizarre spectre of experimental ideological charter schools. And people in Christchurch, and I've been there and attended public meetings on those issues, Issues, do not trust that this renewal plan is not connected to that agenda. In fact, the renewal plan is explicit about taking opportunities, but for whom and to whose benefit, that's what the people of Christchurch who are affected by the potential closes would like to know. So what are the criteria? Now, we were told last week there are three, that there is demographics, that there is earthquake damage, and there is also um, a quiet mention of educational achievement. Now, we'd like to know what that means. What, what is meant by judging a school on the third one? Uh, if those schools are being closed because they're failures, then that needs to be put up front so those schools can challenge that because it's a very interesting criteria to use. So whatever, we need to examine those three things. Demographics. Now, there's a huge debate about demographics in Christchurch right now. There's a huge debate as to whether the 4,500 or so students have left will not return during the rebuild. There's a big debate about what's happening in early childhood. There's a considerable debate about what's happening in, in terms of the buildings. So some of the schools, and, and as um, Leanne Dazil, just the Honourable Member, just pointed out in her question, don't have damage. So if they don't have a demographic collapse, and if they don't have damage, then it's very difficult for them to accept the rationale. And if the rationale is they are failing students, let's go there for a moment. If they're failing students, such as Māori and Pacific students, let's go there for a moment, because the plan's very strong on that. And of course, I myself very interested in that discussion. But what I'm hearing from the two kura is that they are going to be merged against their will if this goes ahead. And the two kura are in the paper today saying they're actually going to the Waitangi Tribunal to lodge a complaint about what they describe as a new round of colonisation, which is hardly the benefit for Māori students who are asking for the choice of having two kura. And these two kura are very different from each other and have dis asserted that they do not want to be put together. Te Whanau Tahi, um, tahi and Spraydon and to Kura Whakapuma Te Reo Tuturiki Waitaha are actually complaining 
that they're going to be merged when they come from really different cultures and they compared themselves to Catholics and Jews and said it's like saying they should all be in one school, which is an interesting comparison. But what I think they're really saying is, what they're saying is, just because we're Māori, don't say we have to be merged. If you're serious about lifting the achievement issues, if you really want to talk to us, be really explicit about these educational criteria that you're applying in the renewal plan. Don't just say it's demographics. Don't just say it's geotechnical, unless you've finished the work. So we've got a situation where Shirley Boys, for example, and other sites the work is not actually finished, and yet the options have been put out that they've got to be moved. And so it has created this huge level of confusion. It was never going to be easy, and I'm not saying the government had an easy task. But what is interesting is what we are hearing back from communities, and parents in particular, about how they see the consultation to date. So 544 people were involved in the consultation, and many of them emphasised points which I believe have been manipulated, such as the word school as hub. Now, if you read the analysis of the summary of the submissions, what you're hearing is not that people want bigger schools, but what they want is their existing local school, if it can be rebuilt, if there is sufficient logic and they agree with it, that they have more services available on those sites, which is actually a hub, but not necessarily to be merged with bigger schools, because bigger is not always better. There are a huge number of issues, Mr Speaker, that I have got I'd like to canvas. Issues around early childhood and the concerns around waiting lists that already exist. Issues around school transport in a city that is already really difficult in terms of transport. The rural schools such as Duvichel and O'Kane's are raising concerns because they don't necessarily want to be don't necessarily want to be merged with Akaroa. The issues around unfinished reports and all kinds of communities issues. I went to Banks Peninsula recently and I, I saw the uh, size of some of those schools. And so some of them there is a logic to the mergers, but others there is, there is definitely not. The intermediate parents and teachers have raised a lot of issues because they think there is actually an agenda around that. So there are core issues around what is really going on with the plan. And Mr Speaker, renewal is about the right of education professionals, parents and teachers to talk about the kind of hope they want for their city. And they did that. They participated. But many of them are now reacting and saying that they are not actually happy with what is being proposed. And so I have many quotes in front of me from parents saying things like, this has added to our uncertainty. Every person we have spoken to is furious with, with having something else, quote unquote, done to us by this government. The schools have been a real focus of our community. With the start of the city in a constant state of flux, they've been the rocks of our community. By offering the children something normal and stable and predictable, that's what's been important. The communication and transparency has been confused, contradictory and amateurish. There has been a lack of, this is quoting Mr Speaker from parents, a lack of compassion or empathy. Other concerns are that consultation is a mere talking shop, to be honest, there will be a further push to leave Christchurch. And one of the last comments that a parent sent to me was, don't experiment with people in vulnerable situations. Don't experiment with them with their children's future. And they are worried about charter schools. They are worried about supersized environments. They know there has to be change, Mr Speaker, but they want the plan to reflect what they are saying about local resilience and local power. Because if there's one thing people care about, and it's obvious in the summaries and the analysis of the submissions, they care about their local cultures, their local very specific traditions. And the people on the west side are very concerned, but the people on the east side have been through far worse. And so if there's a logic to making change, they have to have buy-in. They have to ne be negotiated with in a way that's respectful for them. And unfortunately, the launch was a really bad beginning to a very difficult process. And it's really, really important that from here on, Mr Speaker, there is a constructive engagement about the criteria. And so the demographics, the, the issues around whether it's building damage or not, and the issue particularly around the educational agenda, whether it's failure 
or whether it's underachievement or what that means has to be made exp explicit to those communities because they are asking to know what have we done wrong, why are children going to have to move. And I think if you're going to talk about closing a school, even not in a disaster zone, it's always very emotional, it's always very sensitive. And, and if you're going to do that, you have to say you take the community with you. Now, there's a lot of wonderful rhetoric, and there's all this wording about dual shifts and recapitalisation, but it sounds more like decapitalisation, decapitation. We have to be more careful than this, because I don't think the people of Christchurch who are writing petitions and who are holding public meetings are being manipulated from Wellington. What they're saying is, we live here, we want more dialogue, we want to be part of the decision-making, and we want educational change to be based on the robust and resilient issues that we actually live with. And everybody like myself who comes from a small community knows what a school can be. And if it's down to six, close it. But if it's not, if it's an intermediate like Chisnell Wood, who are actually seen as highly successful by their communities, then we have to make a better argument than, say, a whole lot of rhetoric about consolidation and re rejuvenation, lots of lovely, shiny documents, lots of beautiful words. But in the end, people who are traumatised and children who are traumatised need a great deal of care. And there needs to be more care than there was shown last week. I mean, I appreciate the difficulty of what is being tried to do, but hope, Mr Speaker, is based on respect, and respect must be based on listening to the people on the ground. Kia ora. Mr Speaker. The question is that the motion be